Hello my friends, in this tutorial we will learn to analyze employee vocation data in Power BI. We start from the table in the left part that has the employee vocation data in a very unfriendly format directly from the IT system and we will arrive at the table in the right part which has meaningful data we want to see each month where are the biggest number of vacation taken per day of the week in order to plan our workforce better. If we take a look at the type of vacation date, we see that each employee has individual dates of vacation, but also a list of dates. For example, here from five August to 7 August and the challenge would be to extract these dates and make a meaningful analysis. We will use Power BI but the same steps can be made in Excel with Power Query. We should go to data, get data from table and we will start the same steps that we will see now in Power BI. So we switch to Power BI and go to import data from Excel to get that table. We select the source table and go to transform data. So the first step would be to split the column vacation dates by delimiter. The first delimiter that will split will be the semicolon. So we click right split column by delimiter. So it will be custom. Our delimiter is a semicolon and we want to split the data into rows. Okay, not to create additional columns, but to have it in the rows for each employee. So each employee which have multiple data will be repeated in the rows and we will see the data. Click OK. And now you see that, for example, this employee now has multiple rows. Now the next challenge will be to split again the column by delimiter. Here in the dates, the list of dates that are separated by this line. So again, click right split column by delimiter and now would be the line and now we have two column with dates and we want to transform they into dates because now you see that they are not formatted as date and we go to change type using locale because we have this format, UK format, first the day and then the month. And now we need to tell Power BI that we, we have the UK format. So the data type is date and locale is not United States with, which has month and then day, but English United Kingdom, then month. Okay. And now you see the icon changes to a calendar. Now the next step would be to get a list of dates where we have, as you see here, multiple dates, an interval. So we will add a custom column and we will use the M language to get that list. The M language is the language that is behind Power BI in the Power Query application. So we go to add column, custom column. We will call it date list. And we went, we want to say like this, if, if vacation dates two is null. Actually is different than null. Okay, we want to get the list. Then, 
in the M language, in order to get the list, we say number dot from, and then we say the first column, vacation date one, two dots, and then number dot from, vacation dates two. So take the list between the first figure in vacation date one, first column, and to the second column. And we have to finish the if statement with else null. OK, no syntax error, and press OK. And now we get the list where vacation date 2 is not null. What we can do now is click these two arrows to expand, expand to new rows. OK, so now we have the list of dates. Each employee here is repeated and where we have an interval of dates, we have it here. And now the last step that we want to make is to say like this, to add another column and to keep if in the date list column is null to take the vacation date one from here, if not to take the date list from here. So we go to add column, custom column, and we say like this, if date list is null, this column, then take vacation dates one, take the data from here, else take the column date list. Okay. We can rename it as dates. And uh, transform the type, change type with using locale, again, to put it in the UK date format. So we go to date, English, United Kingdom. OK. And now the transformation is finished. We can just delete these three helper columns. So now we have a nice looking table and we can start analyzing the data. We will have two ways of analyzing it. First, the old Excel way, and the second one, the data model way. We will start with the Excel way, meaning that we will add in this table some helper columns like month, day of the week, and then we will pivot the month column and make a nice pivot table like in Excel that we actually can also export in Excel. And then I will show you the data model way. So let's go back to Power BI and start making the Excel way. First, we will reference this query, call it Excel way. And now you see it has the source, the previous query and now we can start adding columns we need to add uh, the month column and uh, also add another column we select the dates column and add day day name of day we can select and also the day of week so we can order it. And now we need to unpivot the month column but first we will delete the dates column because we don't need it and now we will go to transform and pivot column. Power BI asks us the values column to be employee code yes because we want to count them and the aggregate function count OK, and now you see we have here the months, OK, they are not uh, ordered, we can very easily order them by drag and drop, OK, and day of week we can just order ascending, OK, we have here where the week starts on Sunday 
And now we have this table that uh, we can we can uh, close and apply, send it to the table area. And you see we have this new Excel way table where we have like a pivot table. We can actually export it to Excel. So you get the idea we can work this way. The second method would be to analyze it the data model way. We will create a calendar table. We will link our employee table with the calendar table and we start the professional way to analyze it. So we go get back to edit query. So now to keep things clean, we can reference again the source table to create another query and call it data model way. Okay. And now we have back the old table. We first close and apply. And we will create a new table. We press modeling new table. And we have a script that creates a new table. You can find it in the link that I will uh, put right here in the script. Is uh, Reda Reza Rad site where he put this DAX calendar. You just have to copy it and you have the new calendar. The only thing that you have to change is the starting and the ending date of the calendar because we want this calendar table to have the same period that our uh, fact table, our employee data. Okay, It's not necessary to have other years. Okay, So we have only 2022 as in our employee data and we go to relationships and create the relationship between our table the data model way okay dates with date from the calendar table and now we can make some uh, graphs using these two tables let's look quickly at the calendar table you see you have all the months, days, everything that you want in order to put them in the um, visuals. So we go to the Canva okay, here and uh, let's create a matrix where we put the on columns we put the month, month name Okay, and in uh, in values we put the employee code, and we want it to be count. Yes, to count it. Okay, and on rows we go back to the calendar table, and we put the day name. Day name. Okay, so we have here the table, a nice looking formatted table. Now we can arrange the columns and the name of the days very simply. We go to the calendar table, we select the month name and we go to sort column by and we sort it by the month column which is from 1 to 12 and then we can do the same with the day name and go to sort column by day which is also from 1 one second let's see why we cannot ah no we we sort it by day of week day of week okay and now we go back to our matrix
and you see we have them sorted. We can also apply a conditional formatting. We go to values, conditional formatting and say data bars. Okay. And now we can start analyzing our data, where are the days with the most vacation taken, by month and so on. I hope you have found this video useful. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.